So recently, just like oh, a couple months ago, I debunked uh, Byron Taylor cohorts uh, cut and paste uh, that he cut and pasted off of the internet that red states have higher homicide rates than blue states. And technically that's true, but what Byron didn't do because he's not smart enough, and I think he's got some lackeys, some autistics, looking stuff up for him, and he doesn't look anything up. So, you know, he's kind of like Ron Burgundy. He'll read whatever's on the teleprompter. When you start digging into county and city data and looking at local control and demographics of homicides uh, and demographics of population, etc., you find out that that's just a, a, a stupid talking point. Well, Clay and Buck, and I've written about this in my essays for years now, and Clay and Buck recently... There was uh, Joe, some guy named Joe Scarborough, I think, uh, was running his mouth about this and made the same argument that Byron Taylor cohort made that I've already smashed into oblivion. But they're all they're repeating this over and over. There's a lot of people repeating this. I hear, I see it all the time. And of course, when I start debating them on it or challenge them to find find me a state, any state where the whitest, most pro-Trump counties have homicide rates higher than the state average, higher than the national average. Got to use at least a three-year period, period, and higher than the very pro-Biden counties. And I usually go 60% unless the winner of the state won by 60%, won 60% of the vote or more, and then I raise it to 66. But I've been looking at this for years, and none of them have debated me on it. Uh, they usually either, they don't, they just start trying to be funny and just posting memes and stuff. They usually just give up or block me, you know, something like that. But Joe Scarborough is... Uh, there, this is where they're copying it from, and Byron Taylor cohort, like I said, Rachel Mandow excretes it, and then pulls something out of her butt, and then he reg he gets it, laps it up, and regurgitates it. And now Joe Scarborough is doing the same thing. So I hate to belabor the point, but uh, this uh, demo this crime wave in America is a Democrat crime wave, and uh, the black on black homicide rates four and a half times higher than the white on white homicide rate. But they're not going to tell you that. So here we go. We'll roll the clip. And uh, I'll also make some comments. Apparently, Kevin Stitt, the governor of Oklahoma, in his debate with uh, whoever the Democrat, uh, some dingbat, she kind of made some of the same point. She tried to go after him, but we'll we'll get to that, and I'll I'll totally debunk that too for you. Um, I'm gonna post a full transcript or all the links over at, over at Rumble. On YouTube, I think I'll just post the links and not any of the verbiage. Uh, you can go read it over on Rumble. They allow a lot larger, longer description. And YouTube sucks anyway, so who cares? But here, let's uh, roll the clip. Clay and Buck, uh, the floor is yours, my friends. I mentioned this to you, I think, off air, but we, I don't believe we discussed it on air. We've been talking about crime and how it is one of the central issues that is being discussed in the closing days of the campaign. This poll came out yesterday, and I thought it was indicative. Question was, do you support or oppose the Black Lives Matter movement? All the voters out there, do you support or oppose Black Lives Matter? In June of 2021, Black Lives Matter had a plus 21 support level. That's right after George Floyd when every company was sending you an email about BLM, when everybody was allowing BLM to break all the COVID rules and the scientists were saying, well, we could have hundreds of thousands of people go protest because it's more important than COVID, but you couldn't, kids couldn't be in school and you couldn't go out and like hang out with your family. Buck, October 2022, do you support BLM? It's now minus three. The majority of Americans do not support BLM, and I suspect this is falling faster. But so that's a 24-point swing, and among independents, it's an even bigger swing because these are people who kind of blow with the wind, I would say, to be kind. Independents not particularly plugged in. They've gone from plus 23 to minus 14, a 37-point swing in the middle part of the country. These are the people that are fed up with crime now. BLM made everything worse yes. for everyone. That's that's really the that is the headline. That is the reality. BLM made everything worse for uh, crime for every community, including the black community. BLM made life more difficult for law enforcement officers. BLM has made 
uh, real estate values in major cities go down as people are fleeing because of these additional issues of cops. I mean, if you look at the Seattle PD, for example, they're down like 30, 40 percent in police force strength in a couple of years. That's catastrophic. Like you, you can't actually have that and expect a city to be uh, at, at any reasonable level of safety. And I, I think it's interesting, Clay, because usually this is where you'd hear. And there are some there. There are some, you know, true believer leftists. You go on MSNBC and you're just like, oh, this is just like, well, a, actually, a, I love the well, actually, you know, well, actually yeah. you know, and there was this moment. I mentioned this where the governor of Oklahoma, Kevin Stitt, who we've had on the show, his challenger said, well, you know, Oklahoma has a higher violent crime rate than New York or California. Comparing states doesn't really mean anything. You have to look at control of cities. You yes. have to look at St. Louis and Baltimore and uh, New Orleans and Chicago. And, you know, you go, you go, you look at all these places and Memphis. You look oh, at yeah. all these cities. In my home state. Which That's what I want to play charge? for you now. Because Joe Scarborough on MSNBC, Mr. Panhandle Joe, who used to represent a part of Florida that I absolutely love, went on and made this exact argument that idiot left-wingers are making now. And he's saying, well, when you actually look at the data, red states are far more violent than blue states. Listen to him. This morning before I came on the show, because I've been hearing this so much, you also hear from progressives that crime is actually worse per capita in red state America, in states that voted for Donald Trump. So I actually tweeted out a study this morning, and I said this study claims that crime's the highest in eight of the ten states where it's the highest. They're red states that voted for Donald Trump. Jacksonville had uh, a higher uh, rise of murders uh, than, than San Francisco, despite the fact they're about the same. Okay, so Scarborough's an idiot here, and I'll just use my state, which I bet is one of the states with a high crime rate, maybe top 10. So I live in Tennessee. Uh, The place where crime is out of control in my home state of Tennessee, and we got a lot of people listening to us right now in Memphis who already know what I'm going to say. It's Memphis, Tennessee. Buck, we discussed this with that awful Eliza Fletcher murder, which crystallized for many people in my state, but also beyond This mom goes out for an early morning jog. She gets uh, uh, attacked and killed by a guy who should have still been in prison. She was a completely innocent victim of violent crime. That's happening far too often all over this country. Memphis only elects Democrats. Memphis is a blue city. Everything in Memphis is run by the Democrat Party. It has, not surprisingly, the highest rate of violent crime in the country. And when you actually... Look at those red states, as Joe Scarborough said, and say, okay, where is the actual crime happening? It is overwhelmingly happening in uh, blue-run cities, right? And so I'm using my home state of Tennessee as an example. Uh, Most of Tennessee is very safe, but in Memphis, it is very dangerous, and the state is not that big, right? Uh, There's six or seven million people who live in Tennessee And a million of those people are in the Memphis area. So the Memphis crime stats are going to make it look like the whole rest of the state of Tennessee is very dangerous. Nashville, not as dangerous, not as blue as Memphis. Knoxville and Chattanooga, other big uh, cities, not as dangerous as Memphis, not as blue dominated. The more Democrat control of cities you have, the higher the rate of crime almost exclusively across the country. Look, this is an argument that they just can't win, which is why yep. there's a, there's a panic, because if they if they do the thing that's obvious, which is to say we actually support police, progressive prosecutors have been a huge mistake. They're admitting that we've been right all along for for them. Politically, that's untenable. It also uh, would aggravate the Democrat woke base. Yes, they would be afraid of losing uh, woke white voters. They'd be afraid of antagonizing black voters by you know, saying, oh, well, defund police was a bad idea. I want to see things Joe Scarborough's way, but I can't get my head that far up my... Okay, so let's uh, get to some data here. This will pertain mainly to uh, Kevin Stitt and his debate with uh, Joey Hoffmeister. According to the 2020 census, Tulsa County and Oklahoma County were 37% of the entire population of Oklahoma. Those two counties were 35.24% of the Oklahoma population. 
according to the 2010 census. Keep that in mind. Tulsa County and Oklahoma County homicides 2015 to 2017, 478. Those counties had, using state data, 65.84% of all Oklahoma homicides. Those counties had a cumulative population of uh, almost 4.3 million, 2015 to 2017, and a homicide rate of 11.165 per 100,000. Uh, according to the Oklahoma State data from 2015 to 2017, well, if we use the FBI data, it was pretty close. Uh, 6.133 per 100,000 from 2015 to 2017, and from 2018 to 2020, it was 6.433 per 100,000. So you can see Tulsa and Oklahoma County, those two counties, big problem. Tulsa County and Oklahoma County homicides 2018 to 2020, 448. So it went down, but uh, it's still really high. Those counties had 60% of all Oklahoma homicides. Those counties had cumulative population of a little over 4.3.5 million and a homicide rate of 10.292 per 100,000. Both times they were well above the state average and national average. I would ask Joy Hoffmeister to look at this data, but she would have to pull her head out of her rear end to do that. Donald Trump won Tulsa County comfortably in 2016 and 2020, but failed to hit 60%. You know, Trump won Oklahoma with over 60%, so those are two counties that didn't support him nearly as much. Biden and Hillary did not win a county there. Oklahoma County was much closer. Trump won both times, but in 2020, he did not even get 50%. So you have to keep that in mind. And when, like I said, when I do this county stuff, I find outliers. I'm looking for counties that voted 60% or more for one candidate. We're looking for outliers, not, oh, we want a county with 48% and the, 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 the Democrat had 47 so if it's got a hoi homo, sorry, yeah, shut up. Now, uh, let us look at data for Tulsa City and Oklahoma City. In 2020... Those cities had 27.43% of the entire Oklahoma population. In 2010, it was 25.9%. Tulsa City and Oklahoma City homicides, 2018 to 2020, 375. Those cities had 50.26% of all Oklahoma homicides. Get that? Those two cities had over 50, over half of all the homicides in Oklahoma occurred in those two cities. Their homicide rate was from 2018 to 2020, 11.710 per 100,000. Tulsa City and Oklahoma City homicides, 2015 to 2017, 422. So it went down again from 2018 to 2020. Improvement, but their homicides, 2015 to 2017, 422. Those cities had 58.12% of all Oklahoma homicides and their homicide rate was 13 0.487 per 100,000. And I use the census data for those population totals. Do you realize that from 2018 to 2020, outside of Tulsa County and Oklahoma County, the state of Oklahoma had a homicide rate of 4.942 per 100,000. Granted, that is high, but still about 10% lower than, the, lower than the national average for those years. You can see the problem areas in Oklahoma, and it is largely two counties and two big cities inside those counties. And here's some more uncomfortable data for Joy Hoffmeister and Democrats from Oklahoma in one of my previous essays. From 2018 to 2020, blacks were 34.3% of homicide victims in Oklahoma. From 2015 to 27, blacks were victims of homicide 37.2%. 36.766% of the time, so they're very high. 7.8% of Oklahoma's black, so there you go. From 2018 to 2020, 39.3% of all those arrested in Oklahoma for murder were black. From 2015 to 2017, blacks were 46.433% of those arrested for murder in Oklahoma. And like I said, Oklahoma is 7.8% black. Look up disproportionate in the dictionary, kids. Joy Hoffmeyer's, Hoffmeister's simplistic idea, simplistic plea about homicide rates in Oklahoma is just that. Simplistic idiocy that appeals to the basement dwelling, I don't have a job crowd. The devil is always in the details. And I would accuse Joy of lying, but she's running for governor and she literally doesn't know this. Those Democrats who just vomit forth homicide rates by state would not accept this argument. Nations that vote for Joe Biden have higher homicide rates than nations that vote for Donald Trump. <laughs>
<laughs> the homicide rates in the U.S. for 2021 and 2022 will undoubtedly be higher than when Donald Trump was in the White House 2017 to 2020. The riddle and addled Democrat will say, uh, duh, uh, you have to look at state data because states are different. Uh, uh, duh. What about counties? Let's look at county level data instead. When you start to delve into county data, you see, and this is the case in Tennessee, Missouri, Illinois, Kansas, etc. When you start to delve into county data, you see that there are a few bad apples in the bunch. Delaware is another example. They got they have three counties, and one county is responsible for most of the homicide, and you can drill that down to one city and a few neighborhoods in that city. I'll let you guess which one. In Tennessee, Shelby and Davidson counties are doing the lion's share of the crime. Outside those places, there is a massive disparity in homicide. In Kansas, it is two counties that are that typically vote Democrat. In Illinois, it's, you guessed it, Chicago and East St. Louis. I think East St. Louis, if any city, 15,000 or more, they blow everybody out of the water for homicide rate. It's a wreck there. And it's been a wreck there for decades. That's Reagan's fault. The very pro-Trump counties in Illinois have very low homicide rates. In Missouri, it's Kansas City and St. Louis City, which are full of black-on-black -black homicide. The very pro-Trump counties in Missouri have very low homicide rates. You remember from my essays, what is it, North Dakota? 10% of North Dakota's population are 45% of their arrestees for homicide. I just threw that in there. Didn't have it in my script. You can look at county data, 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 data and then drill down to city data, as I have. And then you can do what John Lott did, start drilling down to neighborhood data. Here's a small sample of what he said. Quote, murders actually used to be even more concentrated from 1977 to 2000. On average, 73% of counties in any given year had zero murders. Possibly this change is a result of the opioid epidemic spread to more rural areas. And I would concur with that. But that question is beyond the scope of this study. In 2014, the murder rate was 4.4 per 100,000 people. If the 1% of the counties with the wor worst number of murders somehow to become a separate country. The murder rate in the rest of the U.S. would have only been 3.4 in 2014. Removing the worst 2% or 5% would have reduced the U.S. rate to just 3.06 or 2.56 per 100,000 respectively. End quote. So even in today's landscape, where the homicide rate has spiked the last three years, the lion's share of the homicide problem is still among a tenth of U.S. counties. It's not white rural Iowa, Wyoming, Montana, most of New York State, most of Texas, most of Missouri, most of Illinois, Utah, etc. It's the Democrat enclaves that I have examined in my essays that collectively have homicide rates more than four times the national average. Continuing, Mr. Lott, quote, when you look at individual counties with high number of murders, you find large areas with few murders. Take L.A. County. With 526 murders in 2014, the most of any county in the U.S., the county has virtually no murders in the northwestern part of the county. There is only one murder each in Beverly Hills, Hawthorne, and Van Nuys. Clearly, different parts of the county face different risks for murder. <gasps> You mean like, so a, a red state like Missouri that has a high homicide rate, there's not dead bodies piling up everywhere? Oh my gosh! And continuing with Mr. Lott, the map in Lott's article, which I linked to, shows the distribution of murders in Indianapolis with 135 murders, although, although the city extends well, below, well beyond the 465 highway that encircles downtown Indianapolis, there are only four murders outside of that loop. The northern half of the city within 465 also has relatively few murders. Here are Chicago's murders through the first 4.5 months of 200, 2017. There were 222 homicides by that point. One small neighborhood, Austin, counts for over 25 murders, but 23 of the 77 neighborhoods in the city have zero murders, and most of the 40 neighborhoods in Orange have only one murder. 12 of the neighborhoods have 10 or more murders. Oh, imagine that. End quote. And the beat goes on. And in closing, the next time you hear Byron Taylor Cornhole, the divorcee Stan Cedar, Joe Scarborough, Joe Biden, or any idiot dumbocrat start flapping their yellow teeth about homicide rates in red states, you can rest assured they have not a clue. 
The board has received Joe Scarborough and Brian Tyler Cohen's concession, and I graciously accept it. No charge for the data. Uh, thank you very much for listening, and pass it on. And next month, vote the bums out. Thanks.